everyone, and welcome to the Halton Catholic District School Board's Transition to School Parent Meeting. My name is Jody O'Reilly and I'm the Special Education Coordinator. I'd like to now turn it over to our Superintendent of Special Education Services, Stephanie Ballow. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us. I'm Stephanie Ballow, the Superintendent of Special Education, and on behalf of the Halton Catholic District School Board, we're very pleased that you've decided to register your child in one of our schools. The start of the school year is certainly an exciting milestone for families, and our plan this evening is to discuss all the ways that we can support your child as they enter school for the first time. I'm very pleased to introduce our staff panel who will be facilitating the session this evening. We have Jody, who just introduced her set herself. She's the special education coordinator. Denise Coley, the chief speech and language pathologist and Jacqueline Priest Brown, the curriculum consultant for the early years kindergarten program. I'd also like to introduce our special education consultants who each support our schools. We have Lisa Vaca. Good evening, everyone. Anita Bader. Good evening, everyone. Riona Richardson. Good evening, everybody. Claudia Bowman. Good evening. Karen McCarthy. Hi there, we're so excited to have your kids enter our school. Ashley Fliss. Hi, everyone. And last but not least, Jennifer Thompson. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'll turn it back to Jody. Thank you, Stephanie. We would like to begin our meeting um, this evening in pr prayer. So please join me in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. A prayer of St. Francis. Lord, let thy peace fill me up until I overflow, that where people cannot speak, I may be their advocate, that where anyone is rejected, I may extend my arms in welcome, that where parents are heavy burdened, I may offer a word of comfort, that where our children struggle, I may lift them up and cheer, that where some see disability, I may reveal to them extraordinary gifts, that where others judge, I may share with them my deep gladness, and that where any are overlooked, I may help the lights of all to shine. O giver of these gifts, grant that I may not seek so much to be reassured as to reassure, to be praised as to praise, to be, ex to be accepted as to accept. For it is in all of our uncertainty that we are inspired to hope. It is in our great challenges that we discover our greatest joys. And it is in our community of wanderers that we find the way home, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'd also, li also like to take a moment to honour the Indigenous land on which we reside here in Halton. as we know it today is rich in the history and modern traditions of many First Nations in the Métis from the lands of the Anishinaabe to the Attawandaron the Haudenosaunee and the Métis these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history as we gather today on these treaty lands our Catholic social teachings call us in solidarity with our Indigenous brothers and sisters to honour and respect the four directions lands waters, plants, animals, and ancestors that walked before us. All these wonderful elements of creation exist. Gifted to us by our Creator God. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards of this traditional territory. Before we begin, I just wanted to share with you the QR code here. So this QR code will take you to an MS form where you will be able to ask questions. 
we will be monitoring this forum's link throughout the presentation to answer any questions you might have. We will also be sharing a feedback form again for you to ask any questions just in case we didn't receive um, the, on the first form. We really do want to make sure that you have all your questions answered around special education programs and services at HCDSB. So your child's educational journey is starting, um, which I know for many parents is filled with, of course, hope and excitement, but it's also um, filled with a little nervousness at what to expect. And even more so if you have a child with special education needs. You've probably already navigated a lot um, with finding out that your child has special needs to entry to take care and so on. And now a new journey is beginning here. And so as it starts here, your child entry into kindergarten, our goal is to support the transition into, into kindergarten and make it as smooth as possible. Your child's homeschool and the special education department will collaboratively support your child through the elementary years, the transition into secondary, and then post-secondary, wherever that may lead. So what do we believe? We believe that each student has the right to an education, which will foster spiritual, intellectual, physical, emotional, and social growth, and that students with special needs should be given the opportunities and supports necessary to reach their full potential. And that is what we want for each and every child that enters through our doors. And again, we know that this is a time that's filled with tre trepidation for many of you, so we want to make this transition to school as positive for both you and your child. It's an exciting time, but I know it can be nerve wracking as well. I'd like to start by uh, introducing you to Jacqueline Priest Brown, who's the curriculum consultant with responsibility for the early years. Jacqueline. Thanks, Jody. The Catholic Kindergarten Program is a child-centered, developmentally appropriate play and inquiry-based program. The purpose of the program is to establish a strong foundation for learning in the early years and to do so in a safe and caring environment that promotes the spiritual, physical, emotional, and cognitive development of all children, just like Jody mentioned. Foundational to the kin kindergarten program is an understanding that each child is created in the image of God. Children are supported to be creative as God is creative, to be inquisitive so as to encounter and deepen their understanding of, of God, and to use their God-given gifts and talents to explore the world in the service of others. The program recognizes the importance of the family and the faith community. Families, of course, are their child's first and most important teachers, and children are supported, nourished, and guided by the faith community of the church. The primary goals of our Catholic Kindergarten program are to establish a strong foundation for learning in the early years, to help children make a smooth transition from either home, childcare, or preschool settings into school settings, to allow children to reap the many proven benefits of learning through relationships and through play and inquiry, and to set the children on a path of lifelong learning and nurture competencies that they will need to thrive in the world of today and tomorrow. This program reflects the belief that children are capable and competent learners, full of potential and ready to take ownership of their learning. It approaches children as unique individuals who live and learn within families and communities. At Halton Catholic, all children are welcomed, included and celebrated as gifts from God. Thank you, Jacqueline. Now we are going to get into the information related to special needs and education. So information that will help you develop a greater understanding of new terms, and there's many of them, and how special education works in our board. So what are special needs or exceptionalities in education? Many types of special needs exist, and in education, these are referred to as exceptionalities. As defined by the Ministry of Education, an exceptional pupil is a student who has, a who has significant behavioral, communicational, intellectual, including gifted, physical, or multiple needs such that he or she is considered to need a special education program. Children with special education needs require teaching interventions 
that differ from other students in order to learn, to opt optimally develop skills and to reach their full potential. In the previous slide, I mentioned that students are identified as um, I mentioned that students that are identified as exceptional are considered to need a special education program. So what is a special education program? This is a program specific to your child and it is called an individual education plan or an IEP, another acronym you'll hear. An IEP is a program put together collaboratively with yourself as parents or guardians and school staff to outline the program goals and required accommodations to meet the individual learning needs of your child. As your child grows and learns, so too will the program required to support your child's needs. These changes will be based on the results of continuous assessment and evaluation. So what are special education services? Special education services are the people, facilities, technologies, equipment, and other resources your child's school will need to put together and then carry out the special education program. The people that may be involved with planning and implementing your child's program or your child's teachers, the school certs, the special education resource teacher, that's a cert, the principal, the board's itinerant certs, and board consultants who you met earlier, as well as other board special education staff as required. So how are special education services allocated? Special education services are allocated based on the individual and collective needs of students. So facilities um, are modifications to schools or classrooms that are made via consultation between community partners and our facilities, for example, ramps or lighting. Technology is a variety of technology is available at every HCDSB school and specific technological devices are provided in consultation with community partners, such as communication devices. Equipment, again, in consultation with community partners, a student's need for equipment is determined at case conferences and it is ordered through our SIA process so that the student has everything they need for entry to school, such as mobility equipment, toileting equipment, um, change tables, that sort of thing. We also have human resources, so educational assistance. HCDSB has developed standards and practices to assist in building independence for students requiring the support of an educational assistant. School teams will work in conjunction with board spec ed staff to determine the most appropriate level of support for students. Schools will support independence for students by providing opportunities for students to work with a variety of educational assistants. Educational assistants are allocated to schools to support the needs of students in the following areas. Health and medical, safety and behavioral, adaptive functioning, communication, social and emotional, and academics. So in addition to the process we have for allocating educational assistance support, as I described in the previous slide, our philosophy of support is grounded in the golden rule of adult support, and that is to support our students in building independence. We know and our hope is that what independence looks like as students enter school changes over time and will look different as they leave us post-secondary. And for each child that will look different again, but our goal is to support our students to reach their full potential and become as independent as possible. And I know you might be thinking, but my child's just entering kindergarten. And we do know that, but we do start building that independence as soon as they start with us. Recognizing the outcomes build upon each other, that independence is realized by increments, greater independence really does lead to greater opportunities, and our moral imperative is to prepare our students to achieve to their highest potential in order to realize those opportunities. We have at our school board, we have adopted an inclusion policy because we believe every effort should be made to provide programs and services to support students with exceptionalities in the regular classroom setting. I'd like to just take a moment here and see if one of the consultants could look through the MS form and see if there's any questions that we have that have come through. 
Hi, Jody. It's Claudia here. Uh, the, there are no new questions. It's the same question that we had from this morning around the process for a grade one student compared to a, a, a kindergarten student. Would the process be the same? That is and a great question. Thanks, Claudia. Thank you for that question. I know the MS form was available prior to this presentation, so we thank you for that question. Um, and the process does remain the same. If you're entering new to our school board, we want to support and build um, a a positive successful transition for your child regardless of entry in JK or grade one. So the process will remain the same that you're hearing hearing tonight. So let me talk a little bit more about the transition process. I have talked about special education programs and services in our board, but the transition process and how um, and how we support the transition of your child into school is probably the most important information for you as a parent or guardian right now. We do follow our ministry guidelines. PPM 156 outlines the roles that schools have in supporting the transition of students at the entry to school, within school, from grade eight to grade nine, and then post-secondary. In the case of entry to school, we are required to put in place an individual education, uh, excuse me, an individual transition plan for your child. So starting with registration, if you haven't already done so, hopefully you will do so after tonight, and that is register your child at their home school. This can be done online and the school will make arrangements for you to provide the appropriate documentation to support the registration. For example, your child's birth certificate, proof of address, etc. There's also a kindergarten questionnaire and part of this registration process involves the kindergarten questionnaire and it is offered in different languages. It is very important that if you haven't already done so that you complete complete this questionnaire. It helps the school team, including the kindergarten educators and special education resource teachers get to know the needs of your child. And you can find access to that kindergarten questionnaire where you find access to the online registration on our board website. The SC14 is part of the online registration process again will involve self identifying your child with special needs. In that case, the school team will reach out to you to complete an SC14 form, which allows the school and board team spec ed staff to discuss the needs of your child with the child care or preschool that they are attending. Consent to exchange personal information. So if you have, for example, a speech and language assessment, you will be asked to complete what's called an SE 13B, and that will allow um, the SLP report to be reviewed by our speech and language department to support the school team in supporting your child's language needs in the classroom. There will be a virtual case conference. You will be invited to a virtual case conference transition meeting so that the school team and board team can get to know the needs of your child and based on those needs develop a transition plan. Specialized transportation may be provided for those students who meet special needs whose special needs meet the board and ministry requirements. There's also school hosted kindergarten information presentation. So this presentation this evening is specific to children with special education needs but your school will also host a virtual kindergarten orientation that you will be invited to to find out more about school start and end times and other school specific information. So it's very important that you that you also attend that um, information evening at your home school. As and finally is the transition visit. So part of the transition plan for your child may be a visit to the school prior to at school entry in September and that will be determined at the case conference and more information on this will be given from your child's school. So we know that teachers do have the greatest impact on student learning, absolutely, but they aren't alone. It is a team that supports your child. So we also have special education uh, support personnel at the board level. We have our special education consultants again who met earlier we have community partners. We have the kindergarten team and school principal. As I mentioned, they have the greatest impact on your on your students uh, and your child's learning and the special education resource teacher that will help that school, uh, kindergarten team. 
In addition to the kindergarten team, the school principal and the special education resource teacher, we also have a number of board based special education support staff to support your child. So we have behavior analysts, child and youth counselors or CYCs, communication disorder assistants, CDAs. We have a consulting audiologist. We have educational assistants. We have itinerant teams, which include certs and EAs. We also have a itinerant DHH, a deaf hard of hearing uh, certs, and we have itinerant blind low vision certs. We also have psychology services, psychological services, excuse me, social workers, again, Beckett consultants, and speech and language pathologists. And as mentioned, we also work with a number of our community partners that you may or may not already be associated with. We have Community Living Ontario, Erin Oak Kids, Halton FASD, the Ontario Lynns, Halton Region, Ontario Early Year Centre, Woodview and Rock are many of the community partners that we work with. We do have a parent guide and I invite you to scan the QR code now that you will be able to access on our board website. And we will also have an updated parent guide that will be available in hard copy for September. In addition, when you go through the IPRC process, which is the Identification, Placement and Review Committee, this is the process which formally identifies your child in our board, you will receive a copy of this from the school. There is information in this booklet on the IPRC process, information on SEAC, which you'll hear a little bit more about later on this evening and other information to help you navigate special education in our board. Again, we do have a process that identifies your child with special needs in our board, but typically this is something that is put in place after your child enters school and the school team gets to know the needs of your child. Regardless of a formal identification through the IPRC process, the needs of your child and the support they will, will require will be met. For a child with equipment needs, you might go through this process earlier in the year. For, for students without equipment needs, this might happen into their second year of the kindergarten program. Regardless of when this happens, you'll work with the school team to determine when the IPRC needs to take place. Again, I'm just gonna pause here just in case there's any other questions. Claudia, was there any questions that came through on the MS form? There aren't at this time, Jody. Thank you. No problem. I would like to now introduce Denise, Denise Coley, who is the Chief Speech and Language Pathologist at HCDSB, who's going to talk to you about the speech and language services at our board, as well as school health support services. Denise. Thank you, Jody, and good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, preschool speech and language services are provided by Aeronote Kids and support both speech and language. Speech includes articulation, which are the sounds that we use when we talk, fluency or sometimes called stuttering, and voice quality. Language can be receptive, our understanding of what other people say or what we read, or language can be expressive, putting our thoughts into words and sentences. For school-age children, services are divided and speech is supported by school-based rehabilitation services through Air and Oak, and language support is provided by HCDSB speech language pathologists and communicative disorders assistants. Once children start school, they are discharged from the preschool program and a report is sent with parent consent to our speech and language department. Our team reviews the report with your child's uh, kindergarten educators and supports them in using the strategies suggested by the SLP at Arano Kids. Our model at Halton Catholic District School Board is a tiered model, so most children start at Tier 1, which is the language-rich kindergarten program and class-wide activities. Our speech-language pathologists are often in kindergarten classrooms, working alongside our teachers and early childhood educators to support language and communication development. If your child needs more support with their language development, or they use an augmentative communication system, a referral can be made by the school through the special education consultant for more specialized assessment and support. Next slide, please. Thank you. 
school health support services are provided to students with health-based needs who require professional health services to attend school, to participate in school activities and routines, and to support learning and the acquisition of new skills. Health support services include nursing and dietetic services. These are provided by the Mississauga Halton Home and Community Care Support Services, formerly known as the Halton Mississauga Lynn, for students who are in Oakville, Milton, and Georgetown and Acton. And by the Hamilton Niagara Haldeman Brand Home and Community Care Support Services for students in Burlington. Through this program, a care coordinator arranges in-school access to the services needed, such as direct care to students and training and consultation to school staff. Rehabilitation services include occupational therapy, physiotherapy, and speech therapy. OT and PT services include consultation for safety, mobility, access, and participation in school. Speech services include support for articulation, fluency, and voice disorders. Therapy assistants from Erin Oak also work with students in our schools. Thank you, Denise. All school boards have a Special Education Advisory Committee, or SEAC. I'm going to share a video with you now with a message from our SEAC Chair, Brenda Agnew, that will give you some more information. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brenda Agnew and I am a parent in our board. I am also the chair of our SEAC committee and a trustee for the city of Burlington. I have two children in the system. Uh, one is going into high school and my younger son is in grade eight who will be going into high school next year. And my younger son actually has special needs. He has cerebral palsy and hearing loss um, amongst a number of different exceptionalities. Uh, so I know where you have been. I have been sitting where you are when he started kindergarten all those years ago. Um, it can be nerve wracking. It can be downright scary, um, but uh, we're here to let you know that you have a lot of support. Um, you have excellent people in your corner um, and wonderful support and resources that will be available to you um, to help your child achieve uh, the best success that they can. A little bit about SEAC, I want to encourage you. Uh, it was a great resource for me. Um, so what SEAC is, is the Special Education Advisory Committee. And a couple of years into my son's um, school career, I found out about SEAC and I decided to join. And what SEAC is, it's a mandated committee uh, that is made up of a number of different stakeholders around the table, including uh, trustees, senior staff, as well as representatives from a number of different community organizations across Ontario. Um, and our, our purpose really, our mandate is to provide um, advice and um, information and um, work with senior staff on special education programs and initiatives um, so that we can try to help all children succeed. Uh, we encourage you to join us. We hold our meetings once a month. Um, when we're in person, they are in person and you can join us in person. But right now they are available. The previous recordings are available on our website for you to uh, listen to or you can join us uh, live with our live stream um, every single month. And the information again can be found on our website. We hope you can join us. Each school board in Ontario is mandated to establish a special education advisory committee that is made up of memberships nominated by the local associations and approved by the board. We also, the Superintendent of Special Education Services, along with myself, attend SEAC meetings, as well as additional staff from our team. The local associations have parental representatives who promote the interests and well-being of pupils with exceptional needs and abilities. SEAC's mandate is to make recommendation to the board in respect to in respect of any matter affecting the establishment and development of special education programs and services for exceptional pupils of the board. Here are the number of associations that are represented on SEAC. As you can see, we had a, have a wide range of associations that are represented um, through SEAC. And each of the SEAC members are listed here. For more information, you can please, uh, you can check the SEAC page on our board website.
So I know that is a lot of information. Um, what are your next steps? Again, if you haven't already done so, you can go to the board website and register your child online. There is also a spot to check if your child has special needs. So if you check this, someone from the school will reach out to you about next steps in terms of a transition meeting or a case conference. If you have registered and you still haven't heard from the school, please do reach out to them and make sure to let the, the school know that your child has special education needs. Part of the registration process involves completing the kindergarten questionnaire to help the educator team get to know your child better. Just to make mention about the before and after school care, please be sure to register right away. Even if you are unsure about your needs at this time, you can always change your mind later. It is important to share as much information when registering to ensure the supports are in place for a successful experience. Some programs have their own inclusion staff who may follow up. Your child will not receive one-on-one -on -one support uh, in before and after school care. However, the program can be eligible to receive funding for a support facilitator. And there is now resource support from the inclusion agencies and ROC for before and after school programs. And then the transition planning begins. So our goal, again, at both the school and board level really is to make the transition for you as smooth as possible. So I just want to take a moment to thank you for being here with us this evening. Despite a few hiccups in the presentation, I appreciate your patience. And if you have a moment, please use this QR code, provide some feedback. Um, and if you have any additional questions, we'd be happy to answer them at this time. Claudia, I'm not sure if there's any additional questions prior to the ending our presentation. There aren't at this time, Jody. Thank you everyone again. And we look forward to welcoming your child into our school board for the September 2020-22 school year. Have a good evening.